So there I was, standing in line at Wawa with my iced tea in hand, waiting for my turn to pay. Now, for those of you who are not from Pennsylvania, Wawa is a big chain of convenience stores in this part of the world. I'm kind of a convenience store snob. And Wawa has been one of the coolest things about living in this part of the world. Now I am totally spoiled. Anyway, it was really crowded around noon, and the guy in line in front of me was talking to the man in front of him. Recently, since cases of COVID are again on the rise and many people are returning to wearing masks, these gentlemen were apparently comparing notes. One of them said, I am so done with COVID, and the other one said, me too. Then they both turned around and looked at me like my vote mattered and they were counting on me. So I just smiled and held up my 32 ounce iced tea and said, yeah, me too. That seemed to satisfy them and that was that. It was decided. We were all done with COVID. Except I knew, and I suspect they did too, that none of us are actually done with COVID. But I think I understood what they were getting at. In the past few months, I've talked with so many people who've told me they are done with it. It's apparently an important thing to get off your chest to proclaim both to yourself and to the rest of the world. I think it means I'm weary of this and it's time for me, emotionally at least, to move on. And as far as I can tell, the people saying I'm done with it are all types of folks. They're not being intentionally inconsiderate and I don't think they're stupid. They're both social progressives and social conservatives. I've even heard medical professionals say they're done with it. So maybe it's an expression of frustration and exasperation and fatigue. I know none of these people are lacking in compassion. People who are done with it understand and they mourn the horrible reality of COVID, the incredible loss of life. One million Americans have died of COVID and at least six and a half million worldwide have lost their lives, but that's just a guess. Well over 500 million people have had or now have COVID. That's over half a billion, billion with a B. And many of those have lingering COVID where they continue for months with symptoms like extreme fatigue and brain fog and body aches and no one knows how long that will last. People with compromised immune systems or other medical issues continue to be at a higher risk of serious illness. New variants are still very much a threat and they will be likely for years to come. It's still a huge public health crisis. And those who say they're done with it are not downplaying the tremendous grief people all over the world are experiencing and how beyond the catastrophic wars of the 20th century, we've never had the experience of so much shared grief in the memory of anyone who is now alive or so much depression or anxiety or loneliness. For families who have lost a loved one during this plague, there are no memorials being built to commemorate their loss. There's no COVID Memorial Day. And those loved ones, the widows, the sons and daughters, siblings, grandchildren, they can see just how eager other people are to put this all behind them, to get on with life and for things to return to normal, when for them, life will never be the same, so that only compounds their grief. And those who say they're done with COVID may be done with it, but that doesn't mean they don't know someone close to them who's lost their job or their savings, or someone who had their business go under, and maybe that e even happened to them. And they're done with it even though they know COVID has permanently changed so many things we once took for granted the ways that we work, the ways that we travel, the ways that we go to school, the ways that we worship. It has altered the human landscape in many ways we just do not like. And not all those who say I'm done with it are saying, I want things to be back 100% the way they were before, 
because that's not a realistic expectation anyway. There will continue to be public places with restrictions, places where many people continue to wear masks, and places requiring proof of vaccination. And again, there will continue to be more variants, more spikes in infections, more fear, more loss, and more grief. So what does it mean to say, I'm done with it? Is that an expression of exasperation, fatigue, being fed up, just wanting to get on with life as normally as possible? Sure, all the above. Is it fatalism? Is it the same thing as saying, if I get COVID, I am prepared for whatever happens to me because I'm willing to take that chance? Well, for some people, maybe. But maybe saying I'm done with it is also a way of expressing something more than personal defiance. It could be a way of saying, no matter what, I'm not going to let this thing beat me or beat anyone else or get in the way of me or anyone else living their lives. Maybe I'm done with it is sort of a statement of faith. And back at the onset of the pandemic, I never heard, personally at least, anybody say, I'm done with it. And if they had, I would have chalked that person up uh, to being a denier of reality and science, maybe even a believer in conspiracy theories. Those people who think vaccines are dangerous or a secret plot to control us. People who believe they've done scientific research by looking at websites they've linked to on Facebook. But time has changed things somewhat. You can still believe in science and have taken precautions and worn a mask religiously and gotten vaccinated and boosted and done all the things you needed to do to minimize your exposure. And today, a couple years into it, you can still be someone who proclaims, I'm done with it. And I find that fascinating because we share a culture that's so often divided along political and social lines, and I know that's no newsflash for anybody, but that we seem to be at war with our neighbors over so many issues. In many ways, COVID exacerbated those tensions and divisions. Just in the realm of churches, there were some churches that closed up shop for a long time to in-person gatherings like we did at Salem while others defiantly stayed open, as if COVID could be prayed away. But what if, in a really odd way, the COVID experience in the long run has also had the effect of creating some unity right in the midst of all of our divisions? Sounds crazy, I know, but hear me out. Like a lot of people, I recognize early on that, if nothing else, COVID was a real-time experiment in how we function and cooperate with others, how we work together for the common good, how we express our care and compassion, how we make sacrifices for the sake of others. And we all saw so many examples of that. Medical workers, nurses, doctors, and first responders were and they continue to be absolute heroes. Regular folks who work in grocery stores and delivery drivers and utility workers kept doing their thing and risking their own health to make sure that we had food and supplies and electricity and water. Teachers worked like crazy to reinvent the wheel to ensure children could still attend school remotely. On and on. People here and all over the world our friends and neighbors behaved as if they were performing a ballet while wearing a blindfold and with no chance to even rehearse. It's been amazing to witness the courage and creativity and sheer determination of so many people rising to the occasion when the occasion itself was constantly shifting. So, in that sense, maybe saying, I'm done with it, means... Now that we have at least a better grasp on what COVID is and how it impacts us, and now that we have a better understanding of how to manage life with COVID, even if we still face some tremendous hurdles, we're deciding to say, collectively, we have learned something 
about ourselves. We have learned for sure that we're not perfect in our response to something scary and deadly like this. But we've also learned that we have the faith and the ability and the resilience to keep moving forward and to do the work that we must do to create a better world. And we're not going to let COVID stop us from doing that important work. Jesus was no stranger to the truth that the world can be a cruel and unusual, unpredictable, unfair, unjust, and grief-stricken place. There's a reason why we have so many stories of him healing the sick, giving sight to the blind, and restoring people to life who have been declared dead. Because that was a daily reality. There's a reason he welcomed people who were deemed unworthy and who were social and religious outcasts and misfits. Because, just like today, his time and place was chock full of them. There's a reason he spoke so often of hope and peace and freedom from worry and fear. Because, just like today, people need to hear that those things are possible. There's a reason he told people stories where long-lost, no-good sons are welcomed back home, and unlikely people stop to rescue wounded strangers by the side of the road, and that you are loved and cared for by a God who will never leave you lost and abandoned. Jesus knew how hard and unfair and challenging life can be, but he also knew how fantastic and rewarding and fulfilling life can be if we share a common vision and a passion for seeing and caring for and welcoming others since we're all in the same big boat of humanity as children of a loving God. A God whose love knits us together and is made real when we love our neighbors as we need to be loved. Because love is not some kind of limited resource that's meant to be hoarded like hand sanitizer or toilet paper. Remember when all of that was going on? Love is made for giving away. And the wonder of it is, the more we give it away, the more we understand how limitless love is. Now, love can be a lot of work, too. Just ask anyone who worked at a hospital through those first incredibly frightening months of the pandemic. Love is selfless, but love is also unbeatable. One day Jesus offered up a prayer that he intended his followers to overhear. So it was a prayer directed to God, but he knew his friends were taking notes. It was a prayer for unity, plain and simple. It was a prayer that his followers, and by extension you and me, would understand that our primary purpose in life is very straightforward to share love, to share it no matter who we are or what we do, and to share it together in unity, to make love our cause when we work together as a church, to be so focused on love that we defiantly, hopefully, and persistently proclaim, I'm done with hate because love is more powerful. I'm done with fear because courage is stronger. I'm done with prejudice because racism is idiotic, shameful, and only causes pain. I'm done with homophobia because God created all people good and accepts and loves everyone. And I am done with divisions over issues that simply do not matter in God's big scheme of things when we already know we are capable of standing up to and working around and caring for each other through one of the scariest moments in human history. We already know the power of love. So together, we're done. Because we have so much loving work yet to do.